Hallelujah. Sound like you done put my business in the street there, Brother Pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I and put my business in the street. Uh, I plead the Fifth Amendment or something. But it's all good. And uh, I don't want no applause or nothing, but I, I want you all to celebrate with me this year, 2000, what is it? 21. 22. This marks the 50th anniversary of my call and acceptance to the ministry. 50 years. Mm. And a whole lot of them has been coming up here for 30 or 40 years. And I tell you, I'm so glad for you all. I tell you, we've been through some stuff together. My family, we're, you all are family to me and my family. Hallelujah. I'm just so thankful for you all that you're still holding up the bloodstained banner. And, you know, I found out, Pastor, I, you know, 50 years, you know, I, you like me, I'm sure. You got a folder full of a thousand messages you've preached over the years or more, I'm sure. We never are too old to, to get something new from the Lord. And so this message tonight, this is going to really be kind of a little rough around the edges because this is something that I've been working on. And uh, Brother Herbie came by the house the other day and he helped me out a little bit. And he probably took it and went on with it already before me. But, uh, uh, but I'm going to share... I'll see you in a few weeks. <laughs> but uh, let's get in the word. There's a sweet spirit. You know, there's something about the Holy Spirit. There is something. Uh, you said something in that song. You can go taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Yeah. Well, he doesn't only taste good, but there's an aroma. There's a fragrance. <laughs> I'm going to try it out tonight. I don't know if it's going <laughs> to. 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, we ask God's blessing on his word. And I'm going to talk about, before I get too far along, the anointings of Jesus. This is Paul writing to the Corinthians. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always triumph in Christ. We are more than conquerors. Am I right about it? Amen. Always. Thanks be unto God, and maketh manifest the savor. That's an odor, aroma of his knowledge. Now, I'm, I'm not waxing poetic on you, but I'm kind of dealing with something here that, like I said, God been working this with me, and when he give it to me, I got to try it out on somebody. So you all uh, help me here. Even if you, don't, uh, if you don't get it, act like you're getting it, all right? <laughs> you too back there, Tammy. I see you back there. A savor, an odor, an aroma of his knowledge by us in every place. And what it seems like the Apostle Paul is saying is that there, there's something, I'm going to paraphrase it, there's something about a life well lived in Christ that it leaves an aroma, a sweet smell. You know, some folk like stink, let's face it. There's some folk that just stink. But those of us who have been exposed to the Lord and to uh, the Spirit and the anointing of the Spirit, your life, you know, it's like, well, I'll, listen what he said. And make it manifest the savor, the aroma, the smell, the fragrance of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God, there it is, a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God but as sincerity but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. There's something being said here. We are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved. It's like our lives, just like here tonight, there's just a sweet, sweet spirit. And there, if you can smell it with your spiritual a, a, a anointed soul, hallelujah, it's an aroma, sweet, sweet, oh, Lord, have mercy. I might crack the door over there, Krista. I... <laughs> now, that 14th verse where Paul says, which causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest his knowledge, we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved, an aroma, a sweet aroma to them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the aroma, the fragrance of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life. Unto, doesn't the scripture even say somewhere about the, the incense, the prayers of the saints come up before the nostrils of God as a sweet-smelling savor? and aroma, even in the kingdom of heaven. There was, uh, the apostle, it is believed, was possibly alluding here, and I'm going to try to paraphrase it. This is, like I said, this is just kind of uh, kind of getting us started here. The ancients, the Romans and the Greeks and some of those great conquering nations, Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar, what they oftentimes would do is after great battles and great victories, they would uh, have a big parade. And if you had a parade thrown for you in 
the capital city of Rome, of the Roman Empire, the dominant world power at that time, or Alexandria, which was the Greek capital, if I'm not mistaken, you had really done something great. You were a conqueror. That was the creme de la creme, so to speak. And they would have a parade after a great victory in the battle to, to honor you. And uh, the king might even show up and lead the parade and the procession. And then behind him, his generals and then his soldiers. But they would also have marching with them in chains usually the defeated foes of the enemy whom they had conquered. And what they would do is that there they would have a procession and they would, uh, behind the king and the army, there would be folks going, throwing flowers. You know how a good flower smell. And they would be burning incense. And the king would be decked out and he would have on his best stuff and sweet smell and they say that sometimes uh, uh, that, that the aroma, the smell of the parade could be smelled even before they got there. And the trumpets would be sounding and there would be a great parade and the aroma would fill the area and the town and the, and, and the folk would be there lined up. And it was a victory. The aroma was a aroma of victory for the conquerors but for those prisoners who had been defeated and were in chains they smelt the aroma of death because what would happen is after the parade oftentimes they would take these conquered uh, enemies and they would execute many of them so that the aroma that they smelled, it was the aroma not of life and of victory, but of death. I hope you're getting some of what I'm trying to say here to you. And so what the apostle here is perhaps alluding to is that those of us who are in the triumphant army of the Lord, hallelujah, somebody here, man, we are marching in the victory procession. Oh, you're not hearing me. And the sweet aroma of our king goes before us. And we march behind him. To us, it's the aroma of victory. But to the foe, it's the aroma of death. Devil, I hope you're hearing me tonight. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And it is believed that the apostle may be kind of had this thought in mind, he causes us to triumph, the sweet savor of Christ, hallelujah. In other words, we ought to try to smell like our king, somebody. <laughs> I told y'all, y'all gonna think I'm crazy. It's over here. And by the time the parade was probably over, everybody that had been, been within it, However, went home smelling like the king, smelling like the incense, smelling the fragrance. Oh, you've been to the parade. You were there where well, the king, oh, you're not hearing me. When you've been exposed to the king, hallelujah, we not only walk and talk like him, we ought to smell. Your life will give off an aroma. That when you come, people will be, oh, oh, there comes Herbie. Oh, there comes so-and-so. Your life has got such a pleasing aroma to folk. They're glad to see you come. And when you leave, the aroma stays with, I was, I'm so glad he was here. You said something. You did something. You prayed something that left them feeling better. Hallelujah. Am I making sense to anybody? There an anointing, hallelujah, that we have in God. And we don't even fully, I don't fully understand it myself, but I believe it's an anointing. Whew. Now, that's what you call misdirection. <laughs> now we go with me 
bear with me. This is, like I said, I, this is going to be rough around the edges, but I'm going to give it to you anyhow. The anointings of Jesus. In, in Luke chapter 7. I got to take my time. Is Ron here? He told me to pack a double bag lunch. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 through 50. Talking about the anointings of Jesus. In this occasion, Luke chapter 7. Beginning with verse 36 through 50. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to talk you through it. But it was probably, some say, possibly about a year into the ministry of Christ. And the reason we place it and date it that way is because in the sixth chapter prior is when John the Baptist has been imprisoned and he sends some of his disciples to ask Jesus are, are you the one that should come and or do we look for another and John was having these second thoughts perhaps because that the prophecies of the Messiah was that he would come and he would be like a king and maybe John even had some thoughts about him as a king like David that he was not only going to uh, uh, free them spiritually but also liberate them and John is in prison and he's wondering are you the one that's going to liberate us and so this we believe happened in the life of Jesus about a year into his ministry two years prior to his crucifixion and a woman in the city, he was in the house of a Pharisee who asked him to come and eat. And he went to the house and he sat at meat. Hallelujah. And behold, a woman came, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Somebody say amen. Amen. And stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears. And did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. I'm going to talk to you about this anointing of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you see this woman came and kind of stole the show so to speak. A sinner woman coming into the home of a Pharisee. <laughs> he, she, I doubt if she was on the uh, invite list, but she crashed the party anyhow. Sinners ought to always be welcome uh, into God's house. Am I right about it? Well, this woman came, and the Bible says that uh, she must have been a notorious uh, sinner. She must have been a big time sinner because the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it and he spake within himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him for she is a sinner. Thank God Jesus don't mind for sinners touching him. Am I right about it? Well, this anointing, this woman came here with a box, an alabaster box of ointment, anointing oil. And oftentimes the folks save these uh, anointing jars with alabaster, in the alabaster jars uh, with a special ointment uh, that they save for themselves uh, for their burial or special occasions. Uh, this woman, she approached Jesus from behind and she knelt down. She broke the flask. She began to cry. She washed Jesus' feet with tears. Uh, she wiped his feet with her hair. She kissed his feet. Uh, she then anointed his feet with the oil of anointment. Uh, 
the Pharisee, he, he doesn't so much rebuke the woman, he has the gall to rebuke Jesus. Uh, if he knew, were a true prophet, he's questioning Jesus' integrity because this woman did something special for Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. And she wanted to do something for him. Now we could say she was doing this because he had already done something for her that she wanted to show her appreciation. But it looks to me like she did this just out of the goodness of her heart because the Lord didn't really forgive her and bless her until afterwards. Somebody say amen. So she did it in faith, hallelujah. Bear with me. I'm trying to go somewhere. But the Bible says that this woman did this thing. And Jesus rebuked Simon. Because he said, Simon, I come to your house. Custom is you anoint my head with oil. The, a special guest with oil. You wash their feet. He said, since I've been here, you ain't done none of these things. But this woman, since I came, she hasn't ceased to cry, wash my feet, anoint my feet. Somebody say amen. Somebody pray with me. Now this oil in this alabaster box it was very special. Uh, this oil, they tell me that this same oil uh, that these folks anointed Jesus with, uh, uh, it has been found in the tombs of folks like Cleopatra and King Tut. This oil was a special, priceless, uh, rare oil. We'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, but this oil may have been the most uh, valuable possession uh, that this woman had uh, and oh somebody pray with me uh, and it says uh, uh, that she uh, took the oil uh, and she brought the ointment uh, and she poured them on Jesus feet uh, and anointed him with the ointment. Somebody say amen. Uh, in other words, uh, she gave Jesus uh, the best thing, uh, maybe the only thing uh, that she had of value. Hallelujah. Because maybe something Jesus uh, had said, uh, maybe she was trying maybe to just get his attention. Uh, but all I know is uh, Jesus has always uh, been a friend of sin and so this woman comes and now note this she comes up and she anoints his feet somebody say amen but thank God the Bible she must have not only touched Jesus feet but she must have touched his heart because Jesus rebuked the Pharisee and he tells the woman Huh, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go, oh Lord, have mercy. Uh, up until today uh, but all I know is uh, something the Lord said uh, something he did uh, something she saw uh, something oh you're not hearing me uh, caused her to take a chance uh, that maybe if I get close to him Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you, I haven't seen the light bulb go off over your head. Some of you, a few of you, I think I have. <laughs> she anointed Jesus. She anointed his feet. And Jesus accepted it. And he blessed her. Who can forgive sin? I don't know what this woman. <laughs> she must have. Jesus said, by faith. Am I right about it? Something that maybe didn't everybody else didn't know. Maybe she decided, I heard he's a healer. I heard that he can walk on water. I heard he heals 
the sea. I heard. I think I'll take a chance with Jesus. Somebody here, this is what revival uh, is all about. Uh, sinners, uh, if you touch him, uh, he'll touch you. Hallelujah. And your old stinking life, <laughs> you'll leave here <laughs> smelling like the king. <laughs> he is what you want to remember <laughs> because this woman <laughs> had exposed herself. <laughs> she put the oil on Jesus. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> he smelled good <laughs> and so did she <laughs> because she <laughs> had touched him <laughs> and anointed him. <laughs> so when she left there, I'm fixing it up now. Somebody, what's that smell? I've been with the king. I, I, I anointed his feet and I smell like my king who has fuck. Oh, help me somebody. <laughs> she left there. When she came, she had a stinking life. <laughs> but when she left, <laughs> she was smelling <laughs> just like the king of kings. Somebody tell me you know what I'm... Lord, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Herbie will cancel me out next month if I go too long. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. You can come here with the stinkingest life in the neighborhood and leave here smelling like the king. He'll clean you up. <laughs> He'll fix you up. <laughs> He'll bless you up. <laughs> He'll fill you <laughs> with, oh, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I, I feel that anointing. Oh, you're not helping me. Yep. Uh, John, here's another one of the anointings. John chapter 12, in Bethany, the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, six days before the Passover, which means now, phew, I got to explain. Now, there is a little bit of uh, discussion about whether there were three or two anointings. We know the first one took place two years prior to the crucifixion, earlier in Jesus' ministry. But now we are in the last week. Now this one, in John chapter 12, if it was six days before the Passover, which was, would be when Christ was crucified on Friday, that would take it back to about Saturday, the Sabbath evening. And if I remember right, wasn't it the next day, Palm Sunday, Y'all better help me now. I'm, I'm struggling. 50 years, I'm, I'm struggling. Y'all got to help me up in here. <laughs> this one, Mary, Martha, and I, now it's believed that this one was taking place possibly in the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus in Bethany. What did I say? John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. It says that six days before the Passover, that would have probably been Saturday, came to Bethany where Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, there they made him a supper. It's possible to interpret this as that they were in the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And if we do interpret that, then that means there were three anointings. We'll get to that in a minute. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard. Spikenard. Spike, and the, the, the name is Nard, Spike. But this, this ointment, it was rare. Look what it says. And uh, anointed, what? Help me, the feet of Jesus. And wiped his feet with what? Her hair and the house was filled with the older, <laughs> I hope somebody, sound like somebody getting on the bandwagon. See, I'm trying to show you something here. This stuff was powerful.
now. Let me tell you, my wife ain't here. She, she, she. <laughs> Let me tell you, after all these years, 40 years, this is our 40 year, I think. 40, yeah, 40 year, I think, <laughs> coming up in July. You know, I wear these old less colognes, you know, old spice. It don't get no better than old spice. And it, it, it's wild there, you know. So the other day, about, about a year ago, I got this big idea, you know, I wanted to spice it up a little bit in my life. You know, you want to, men, you know what we try to do sometimes. Spice that. So I ordered some stuff off the line. I ain't going to even tell you what it is. It, it was top dollar. Paid almost $50 for it. That's about as high as I'll ever go. Old Spice, I can get it for less than 10 And I bought that stuff, and I've been wearing it for almost a year, Larry. Especially when, you know, no reaction, no response. And so I kind of got a little perturbed. And so it's been just a couple of weeks ago, we was on the way to church. And the, and the thing said, just spray once or twice. So I did that, and almost a year, she ain't, she ain't even noticed I changed. <laughs> so the other Sunday, we was headed out to church. It ain't been about, about less than a month ago. I put, I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, I'm saying, I pay that kind of money for this stuff. Somebody got to smell me. I don't care. <laughs> I loaded up with that stuff. Got in the car and got halfway almost to church. Did you change your cologne? Did you change your cologne? You got, it's giving me a headache. It's giving me a headache. It says here, and the anointing oil, it fills the house with the odor of the ointment. Oh, bear with me. This oil, this spike was very rare. You couldn't get it in the Holy Land. It came from up in the Himalayan mountains over in India in some places. Nepal, above 10,000 feet from a very rare plant. And they had to get it. It was difficult to get. It was difficult to process. And to get it in the Holy Land, you had to import it. And it was so expensive that it cost Mary a whole year's worth of wages at late. What is it? A, a, a minimum wage today? That means that this in your and my day, a minimum wage for a year might be 20 or more thousand dollars. And they say that this she did she took this thing and this fine she poured it on him a whole pound a whole pound we think of a pound as 16 ounces in those days in Roman measurements I think it was more like 12 ounces but I I, I just ordered a little thing of, of alabaster box with a little Point five ounces of spikena just to see what it smelled. I ain't gonna tell you. Y'all gonna think I ain't telling you what I paid for. Point five. That's not even an ounce. A pound would have been twelve ounces. She poured the whole thing on Jesus' feet, and the room was filled 
with the aroma. <laughs> Somebody hear me? <laughs> Are you hearing me? <laughs> now, if this was six days before the Passover, it would be the, perhaps the evening of the Sabbath prior, which would be Saturday. And then the next day would be Sunday, Palm Sunday, when he rode into the city on a donkey and the folk went before him crying Hosanna oh, oh you not hearing me strewing their clothes following behind blessed is he that comes in the night this was kind of a triumphant parade for him but somebody hear me when he rode into the city he may not have been honored later as a king but today he smelled like a king because Mary he smelt like a king and he was leading the masses behind him and Mary she done used her hair to wipe his feet with that ointment and everybody including his disciples that was in the room there when this took place I guarantee you they all got a dose they all left out of there and oh what's that smell you smell so good I smell like my king I've been with my king somebody say yeah I don't know about you, but I smell the king here tonight. The Holy Ghost anointing is in this place. Somebody ought to say, yeah. <laughs> he smelled like the king when he rode into town. Well, let her alone. That's not the end of the story. Go with me to Mark chapter 14. And we'll get you out of here. Mark chapter 14. And this. Somebody get there before I do. Chapter 14. Now here's where there's a little bit of a difference of opinion among some of the theologians in the schools of thought if this in Mark chapter 14 beginning with verse 3 and going to verse 9 and this same incident is in Matthew chapter 26 verses 6 through 13 we know these two are synoptic gospel types are talking about the same incident some tried to say that these two should go along with John. I'm not here to settle that argument tonight because it really doesn't really matter. I just want to show you one more thing here. In Bethany, in the house of Simon. Now, we would have assumed that the other one in John, he was in the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus who lived in Bethany. But this one is in Bethany, but it says... Simon the leper and it's believed he must have been somebody that Jesus had healed and he sat at meat and there came a woman it doesn't name Mary this could be the third anointing of Jesus having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard very precious and she break the box in other words she wasn't intending they say some of those boxes uh, you had to break them in order to get but they said some of them, they even came with a seal on them so that you could unseal it and pop the lid and pour some and put the lid back on and save some for later on. Somebody hear what I'm talking about? They say this spikenard oil, uh, that it was so valued uh, that it was the scent of the kings. Uh, even in this day and time, if you wanted to give a gift to the king uh, and get on his good side, uh, give him some spikenard oil, uh, an ointment. Uh, somebody hear me? Uh, they say that this ingredient in this spikenard was similar and also in the ingredients in the 
incense that was burned in the temple. Somebody hear what I'm talking about? They say that this spikenard was like the Tiffany diamond of aromas and fragrances that kings wore. That it was expensive. And if you wanted to give him a gift, give him this. Talking about a king now. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Now, this woman here came with her alabaster box of ointment, spike and very precious, break it, meaning she wasn't going to take none home. She gave her all to the Lord. <laughs> now, he is why and where. We diverge a little bit in a different direction. This one says here, and I'll get you out of here in just a couple of minutes, that when she break the box, she poured it where? 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 The other one said they poured it on his feet. Pastor, I, I see that light going off over you. I saw it about 20 minutes ago. But uh, this one here yeah, is different. Uh, she did not uh, pour the oil uh, over his feet. Uh, she poured it uh, on his head. Uh, am I right about it? I hope somebody is, is following with me here. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what are you saying, uh, Reverend Pollard? Uh, I'm saying there's something here. Uh, this woman did things uh, a little bit differently. Oh, what are you saying, Reverend Pilot? I'm saying that there's something here because of all the other incidences. This is the only one that Jesus told his disciples to wherever this gospel is preached from now to eternity. I want it to be mentioned what this woman has done. You want to know why? Because I think she knew something that they did not know she had a discernment that she had oh help me help me holy goes she anointed his head mm. she anointed his head so it wouldn't matter whether it was the others was the same this is other all we know is now Jesus has been anointed from the top of his head Do you remember in uh, Psalm 133 uh, how it talks about when uh, Moses uh, anointed Aaron uh, to be the high priest uh, and it said he poured that anointing oil uh, on his head uh, and it ran down his beard uh, and down to the hem of his garment uh, and no doubt to his feet uh, that anointing uh, that represents the power of the spirit the presence of the Spirit. Do you remember when God told Elijah, you need to go and anoint Hazel and Gehazel and Elijah? They, two of them, to be kings. Elijah to be your disciple. I believe he anointed them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. It's in the word. When they anointed Saul, Samuel did, to be the first king, he anointed him from the head down. When he anointed David to be the king, he anointed him from the head down. When they anointed Solomon to be the king, they anointed him from the head down. Am I right about this woman, you see, Mary may have been anointing Jesus for the death as a corpse, but this woman was anointing him not necessarily just for the death, but this is the king of kings, the king. Ah! She anointed him, not just because he was going to die, but maybe because she recognized. I remember, can I use this? I remember he said that he was. Wake up back there, Paul. 
Hallelujah. I know I'm confusing you. <laughs> and it anointed him so you know what that means that everybody in the room was smelling like the king this woman was smelling like the king and when Jesus in a day or two celebrated the Passover with his disciples he was smelling like a king when he went out to Gethsemane's garden and he sweat was as great drops of blood he smelled like a king when Judas brought them there to take him he smelled like a king when they beat him he smelled like a king when they spit on him he smelled like a king when they crowned him with thorns he smelled like a king Somebody say yeah Somebody say yeah And when they led him out And put the crossbar on his back He looked like you could not recognize him One writer said But he still Even though he was unrecognizable He smelled like a king Because of what this woman uh, had done somebody. You smell that? Smell that? You know how it is when you smell something years later, you always remember smell. Oh, Jesus, when they whipped him, one writer said that even when they whipped him, it may have released the fragrance of the odor of the anointing. <laughs> you can beat me like a dog, <laughs> but I'm smelling like a king. <laughs> you can spit in my face, <laughs> but I'm smelling like a king. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because <laughs> he said, I'm going to die, <laughs> but in three days, <laughs> I'm going to rise up <laughs> with all power in my <laughs> he smelled and these folk that were there this woman that smell they say stay with you for days I read somewhere even weeks they were smelling you been with him ain't you you been near him ain't you you been you smell like he does Huh? You walk like he walked, baby. You talk like he talked, preacher. You sing and shout and praise and glorify like you've been with the king of kings. Am I right about it? Well, now for the rest of the story. We ought to smell like our king. When you live your life the way God wants you to, smell like your king. When you leave here tonight and this week after this revival, you ought to have a little more pep in your step, a little more joy in your soul, a little more hallelujah, a little more hop along and you get along. Am I right about it? Huh? And if anybody asks you, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Tell them I, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, and I've been with my King, and He's blessed me. Well, when He rose, when He rose, and I'll be through here in a little bit. He rose, and the Bible said when he rose, he brought some of the saints that was dead with him. But he had the keys to death, hell, and the... I'm the man now. There's a new sheriff in town now. 
meet some of my f f closest friends. Maybe I don't know if he introduced them. But for 40 days, Jesus did not ascend. You know what I call this in, you know, in NASCAR when you win? You take a victory lap around the track. Jesus took a 40-day victory lap around Jerusalem saying, I'm back, hallelujah. I told you I was a king. I'm alive forever. <laughs> well, that should be it. <laughs> but I would get a whooping if I didn't give you the rest of the story. Those anointings were where folks anointed Jesus. But the most important anointing was another anointing. <laughs> Am I right about it? Let me see now. In Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach. To, to, to the captives, to the poor, to the lame, to the sick. And then here comes Jesus. Oh, Lord, help me. I don't know if I can finish this. Ah, I don't feel up to this one, John. This thing here, there's another, the most important anointing. Ah, help me, somebody. This woman, symbolically, they had already anointed him maybe as their high priest, their prophet, and their king. But here he is. And the Bible says that when he came to John the Baptist, it said that John said, you have need, you want, I need to be baptized of you. John said that, that, that there's one coming after me that will baptize, baptize with water, but he's going to baptize you with what? Holy Ghost and what? And fire. Help me now. I'm trying to hold my composure here for a minute. And when John baptized Jesus in the Jordan, this is where one of the only places in the Word of God where the Godhead is all assembled in one locality because the sun went down. And when it came up, the Holy Ghost came in the form of a dove. And the voice of the Father say this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased you know what I call this this was Jesus' baptism his ordination and his installation service all in one but it was the anointing of the Holy Ghost that made the difference that Holy Ghost when he came home and preached in Nazareth, his home synagogue in chapter 4 of Luke, and he said this day, after he read Isaiah's scripture, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ear. That prophecy was a messianic prophecy, how that the Spirit of God would rest upon the Messiah. Jesus was letting his own hometown folk know, I am the one, and I've got an anointing, not of man, but my anointing. Anointing come from God Almighty. I am the one. That anointing that enabled him to heal the sick, enabled him to rebuke the devil, enabled him to walk on water, enabled him to fight the devils and heal, raise the dead, preach to the to the poor multiply the food somebody hear me that anointing that he had not from three women but this anointing came not in a jar but this anointing came down through 42 generations this anointing was from God almighty ain't no anointing like the 
Holy Ghost anointing. Somebody say yeah. Oh, yeah. Now let's get back down to the nitty gritty. You see this anointing, the other anointing, they gave it to him. They poured it out of jars. This anointing, it didn't come from a jar. It came from the throne of God. But this anointing that Jesus had, he is the good news to you and I. The same anointing that he had. He said, I'm going away. But if I go away, I'm going to send you a comforter. An anointing. Somebody say, yeah. Have you got it? Have you got it? The difference in this anointing was the women, they gave it to him in out of their vessels. But the anointing that he has, he said, I'm going to give it to y'all. And you're going to be the vessel. I'm going to pour it in you. I'm going to press it. I'm going to make it run over. You're going to have joy. You're going to have power. You're going to walk right and talk right. And it'll be in you and with you. Somebody say yeah. And on the day of Pentecost, when it came down like a rushing mighty wind, didn't it bless? Didn't it bless? Didn't Peter stand up and preach like a man possessed? But you want to know something? That same Holy Ghost, that same anointing that Peter had, we've got it, yeah! You've got it! You've got it! You've got it! He's not keeping it to himself! He said, somebody here tonight you can have this anointing you know your life stinks huh everybody else know it too I've been there and done that like you said <laughs> Judy you said I wonder Rotting these things into you. I'm so sweet now, though, ain't I, Judy? Where'd Judy go? She won't even back me up. The anointing. It's the anointing that makes the difference. The song you sang, that last song, that's the first time I'd heard that one. But I said, that's the anointing. That spirit that we feel, that's the anointing. That anointing you feel, that's the anointing. That sweetness, that joy, the fragrance right now. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing all these sweet expressions. I said, that's it, the anointing. We think the only time the anointing is here is when somebody's screaming and hollering and shouting. But like you saying, he's always working. He's always there. He's always He's making a way out of no way. And it don't cost you a dime. It don't cost you a year's wages. Because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin that left the crimson stain. But he washed me whiter than snow. Son of man, this revival is about you. It's about you. Jesus said this. These religious leaders wouldn't allow a sinner to touch them. Much less this woman who they say was possibly a prostitute. The biggest prostitute maybe in town. But Jesus allowed her to touch. He wants you to touch him with your prayer. With your tears. It doesn't matter. always do this but <coughs> but Paul which one is it good to go y'all have you on a short leash here tonight oh we modulating now Ooh, you outsmarted me again, didn't you? <laughs> you can help me.
your power all over me. I feel your power all over me. It's in my hands and my soul. Sinners too here, Pastor. Don't we want to see some sinners in there? This ain't just for church folk. Somebody here. This is for the backslider. You're the guest of honor. You're the guest of honor. And church, we need to be careful. In one of those instances, Judas criticized. Why did she waste this ointment on him? We could have sold it for 300 pieces of silver. This stuff. And, uh, Judas, you're going to get 30 pieces of silver in a day or two anyhow. Why you got to be so greedy? Y'all, that went right over your head. Uh, but what happened was then some of the other disciples chimed in right behind Judas. They let Judas bait them. He criticized. And then some of the other apostles got the mumbling and grumbling. We got to be careful up in here. We want sinners to come. Bring your stinking self on. We've all been down that road. You I, don't ask, don't go dipping in my business. I ain't telling you my business. You can forget that. I was a stinker. But now I wore a little bit of that expensive stuff I was telling y'all about. It. I didn't want you can't preach about stinking, then get up there and smell that. <laughs> Wheezy ain't home. She won't be home. She's in Florida. But somebody here, we've all come the way you've come. Sinner, backslider, you're the guest of honor here. Crash the party. Steal the show. Come to Jesus. And we'll pray with you. We ain't going to criticize you. We've been there and done that. Hallelujah. Come on and get it. Come on and get it. Hallelujah. 